Hi, my name is Danielle Frederick and I am the Youth Services Coordinator for the Watson Branch Library. I'm here with Scott Kleinpeter, who is the uh, director of our digital media lab at the main branch and we're here to uh, today to talk about Digital Art 101, the Inktober edition, which is a program that we are recording today in our new media lab. So before we get started with that, um, I wanted to let Scott tell you a little bit about our new space. Yeah, hi, my name is Scott Kleinpeter. I'm the digital media lab or the digital media coordinator at the Linux Parish Library. We are doing all of this inside of the new Digital Media Lab here at the main branch in Livingston. It is a fully equipped maker space. We have a podcasting station. We have guitars and a bass, a keyboard, and a computer to arrange all the music and video you could possibly want to arrange. So um, today I'm going to be using the labs in Tuos, the Wacom in Tuos, which we keep here so you can come to the lab and do this activity here if you want to. And I think Danielle's using one of the tablets that you check out? Um, yes. Uh, so if you don't have the time to come to the Digital Media Lab to use the Wacom tablet, um, most if not all of our branches do have um, Huion and Spheroid tablets that you can check out. They are plug and play. All you have to do is download your preferred digital art software and then download the driver for the pen tool. Um, there are directions in every tablet that tell you how to do that and it's really, really easy. So that's what I'll be using. Great. All right. So we're going to give it to Sierra Bobo now. She's the artist and she's going to show us how to digitally paint a crane. Yes. Oh boy. All right. I'm so yeah, excited. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Good, good deal. Yeah. Hi. My name is Sierra Bobo and I'm a professional artist who has been creating art since I was old enough to hold a pencil. I majored in painting at Southeast University and am well versed in using most traditional media, including graphite, watercolor, gouache, inks, acrylics, and oil paint. My foray into digital art has been a more recent journey, with about five years of experience under my belt now. Today, I will be walking you through a digital art tutorial on the program Krita using the Digital Media Lab's 27-inch iMac and my Cintiq tablet. Krita is a free art program available online for both Mac and Windows computers. Now that introductions are out of the way, let's get started. Creating a, Creating a canvas. To get started, open Krita and select New File. Don't get overwhelmed by all the choices on this page. We're only going to pay attention to two things, the image size and the resolution. First, let's change the size of the canvas. Change the pixels to inches on both the width and the height, and make sure that the width is at 8 and the height is at 11. Do you see the area labeled resolution right here? We're going to leave that at 300 ppi. If you want to do comic work, the suggested PPI is 600, but for our purposes, we're just going to leave it at 300. Now these are the dimensions of your canvas. Hit the Create button, and we're ready to get started. Anatomy of a photo study. Breaking down your reference image. On the new canvas, copy and paste your reference image, then adjust the size to fit your canvas with the Transform and the Move tool. Keep in mind to make sure that your image stays proportional. Now, make another copy of this image by going to the Edit tab at the top of the workspace, selecting Copy, and then Paste. Next, while still in the topmost layer with the reference image, go up to the tab that says Filter, select it, and then from the drop-down, select Adjust, then Desaturate. Don't forget to hit OK when you're finished. You've now changed your reference image into black and white. This will help you to distinguish between the values in your image. Check your values while working by using the same method on your piece.
Next, we're going to break down our reference image into basic shapes. So create a new layer from the layer menu and select it. Using your brush, break down your reference image into basic shapes. You can change the size of your brush at the top of the, your workspace, the slider labeled size. Breaking down your reference image is a very good exercise for beginner artists to help understand the image you're doing a study of. It helps you learn about values, basic shapes, and the way that these interact with one another to form the overall composition. I'm going to label the shapes in the image 1, 2, 3, and 4, with 1 being the head, 2 being the body, 3 being the crest, and 4 being the negative space. Negative space is very important to your composition. It's the leftover space around your main image. Once you are done checking the basic shapes and values and how they relate to one another, begin breaking down your image into slightly more complicated shapes according to value. This should not be a super precise trace of the image, just a basic roadmap of shapes to help you get started. Now, create a new canvas with the same dimensions as before, and after we briefly cover the toolbar, we'll get started on our own painting. Your canvas and your tools. Let's look at the toolbar and familiarize ourselves with the tools. We aren't going to cover all of the tools in this tutor tutorial. Mainly, we will be covering the transform tool, the move tool, the paint bucket, the brush tool, the color picker, the zoom tool, and the pan tool. We've already covered the move tool, the transform tool, and the paint bucket, so let's take a more in-depth look at the brush tool. The brush tool will be the tool that you use the most often. Think of it as the traditional art equivalent of your artist toolbox. After selecting it, look to the right side of the workspace to change the type of brush preset. There are many brush presets. Digital, erasers, FX, ink, paint, pixel art, RGBA, sketch, and textures. You can also create an additional file that has all of your favorite brushes in it. For right now, we're going to use a basic brush from the paint drop down menu. Next, we're going to use the pan tool and the zoom tool to center our canvas and zoom out so that we can start laying in the basic shapes. Do you see the colorful triangle at the top right hand side of the workspace? This is where you choose your colors. You adjust hue, value, and saturation here. Let's start with a dark gray for the body. Now lay in the shape of the crane's neck and body. Tip, save your file often. Applications and computers can crash and cause you to lose your work, so it's a good idea to make sure you're saving about every five to 10 minutes. To quickly save your work, click on the floppy disk at the top left hand side of the workspace. We're going to label this one crane. 
and it needs to be saved as a Krita document. Now that we have the body, paint in the basic form of the head. On a new layer, we're going to make a very simple circle to define the radius of the crest. Since it's so detailed, we'll come back to this part later. For now, let's work on the rest of the crane. Keeping values in mind, lay in large swaths of color and then gradually work your way into the more granular aspects of the image. It's best to work largest to smallest and basic to detailed, though once you get the hang of it, you can work wherever you're most comfortable. The artistic process is different for everyone. Let's start to add in our final details that really bring the image to life. This is the point where we'll start using our darkest and lightest overall values. You can start zooming in more to add these details.
Let's start cutting out the negative space with black. On a new layer, get your brush ready with your darkest dark and start to cut out all of the area around your figure. Let's start working on the crest. On a new layer, get your new color ready and start going out from around the crane's head.
add detail until you're satisfied, and voila, you're finished. To finalize your painting, we're going to go up to the menu bar at the top and hit File. From this drop-down menu, we'll select Save As. This should prompt a screen that asks for a file name and a document type. Click on the Save As type box and scroll the menu until you found JPEG. Then hit Save. You now have a JPEG image of your drawing that you can view and print and show your friends and family. Congratulate yourself on a job well done. I hope you enjoyed this Krita tutorial. Linked below are some other library resources that you might find useful on your, on your digital art journey. Happy painting!